Yo, this is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And our sponsors are Alpha Claims and Hire Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company. Get a replacement car anywhere in one hour. I really appreciate you joining me today and this story comes from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Thank you to our subscribers that sent this story and wanted me to talk about it and try to break it down and make sense of it. First we see what Dutch news has to say. There is a lot of crime reporters in Amsterdam and the Netherlands and Peter R. de Vries was known as a celebrity amongst them. He was what they called an investigative journalist and he would investigate Dutch criminals similar to what the police would do for example. And today he has been shot in the head in the capital after he left the television studio where he appeared as a guest. This story highlights a lot of different things to be honest but the main one for me is about journalism and also going beyond journalism and trying to become for example and trying to solve crimes which is not what journalism really is about it's about highlighting things that are not spoken about injustices corruption in government and these sort of things this is what i try to focus on when i talk about the stories that i do and also the biggest thing as well is about talking about crimes that people haven't been convicted for if you start to accuse people in public spaces of crimes they haven't been convicted of, then of course you're going to upset a lot of people. Peter R. De Vries made a lot of money and was a celebrity and went on TV, read books all about crimes in Amsterdam and the Netherlands. Police have already arrested three people, two people in a car on the motorway and one was arrested in Amsterdam. They said it was a shocking and outrageous attack on a journalist and therefore an attack on the freedom of press. De Vries was well known in the country for his role in several criminal cases and he regularly appeared as a spokesman for victims and he was in a close circle of key witnesses. He received a number of death threats during his career and witnesses on Tuesday heard that five gunshots were heard and then they saw the journalist had been shot in the head. The Prime Minister said this was a dark day and they want journalists in the Netherlands to be able to carry out their investigations with freedom and protection. That is very true, of course, things need to be reported in the public domain. But as I said before, when it comes to celebrity and people start becoming the person, it starts to get a little bit out of hand. For example, Peter R. De Vries appeared on many television shows and he had his own TV show as well that he got record ratings by accusing people of crimes and things that you wouldn't be surprised would upset somebody. He was shot outside a television studio in Amsterdam and he's in hospital still in a critical condition. I don't know much about him so I did have to research about his career in order to try to potentially see reasons as to why somebody would want to kill him and it seems from his journalistic career he worked for several publications and then he went off to become an investigative journalist himself. What shot him to fame and a film was even made about it starring Anthony Hopkins was about the story about the kidnapping of Freddie Heineken. This happened in 1983 and De Vries followed the case and the kidnapping for the Dutch newspaper De Telegraph. And he attended the proceedings and sometimes visited the hotels in France where the kidnappers were being held under arrest. He wrote two books about the investigation and a novel as well from the perspective of Cor Van Hal, who based on the interviews De Vries conducted with another criminal called Hollander over a period of four weeks during his last hotel arrest in Evry in 1986. The novel was adapted into kidnapping Freddie Heineken in 1994. In November 2006, De Vries did a programme where he broadcast and he accused Joran van der Sloot, one of the prime suspects in the disappearance of a woman called Natalie Holloway, of her disappearance in Aruba. On the 11th of January 2008, Van der Sloot threw a glass of wine at De Vries during a live broadcast on his talk show and he went on to accuse him again of murders that had not been solved and this is what I meant by the difference between journalism, even some types of investigative journalism are not as intrusive as this where you're not a police officer, you're not a criminal solicitor, you're not the judge. Some of these journalists now accuse people without any sort of solid evidence or let's say a conviction 
But this does not matter in the art of television. At the end of the day, the more controversial you are, the more views you're going to get. And he used to get 7 million viewers on his Neverland program. And this was one of the top programs in Dutch history. He then went on to accuse the same man, Van der Sloot, of trafficking women from Bangkok. And he accused him of making £13,000 for every prostitute that he bought into the Netherlands. He then went on to try to solve other cases like Mariska Mast, who disappeared in 2010 in Western Australia. He went there to interview the diving instructor, who was originally being sought by Interpol following the death of the 23-year-old tourist. And at one point as well, he went on to try to form a political party, but disbanded it after he did a public vote, and they said that there wasn't much interest for it. So this is what I'm talking about, a prime example of going off from what you was actually out there to do. You're not reporting on crime, you're actually potentially instigating crime, you're making people want to commit crime because of the way that you're talking about something. The news is the news, nobody nobody can stop the fact that something happened and if you can report it respectfully, correctly and fairly, 99% of the time you won't offend that many people and the small amount of people you do offend, as long as you make yourself accessible to them, most of the time you can resolve that issue. And this isn't the first time that a Dutch blogger has been murdered in Amsterdam, in the Netherlands. The blogging world is very popular out there and, it, and because of the amount of people that do it, blogging about crime, you have to try to get the biggest story or the best headline to try to get the most views. And one man that did this very well was Martin Koch. In 2015, Martin Koch had left prison. He was a lifelong criminal, but now he turned his mind to blogging about it instead of actually committing crime. He'd been to prison in connection to two murders, but the Netherlands has such lenient sentences that he was actually out of prison by the age of 47 after serving two sentences. He lived in the north of Amsterdam and he grew up selling fish with his father and later got into the cocaine industry. The problem with Martin Koch is that he loved the attention, he loved fame. And this is a problem, it's not necessarily a bad thing for some people, but it can often lead to attention that you don't necessarily want. He named his site Vlinders Crime, which stood for butterflies, and the blog had a massive readership. He'd have 4 million views a month, and had a lot of revenue selling different advertising space. He reported on Irish mob kingpins, and murder plots, biker gangs, and, frequent, and his frequent partying habits. Unlike mainstream Dutch media, he often reported the full details of the suspects before they was even convicted. He would often use his sources inside prison as a matter of fact when he was reporting. Someone tried to shoot up his home in 2015 and his car was perforated by bullets in 2016. He also had a bomb put under his car and survived that. And Coke reveled in the attention. In an interview at the scene of one of the attempts, Coke was charismatic and drunk on exposure. <laughs> he stuttered through the interview, which was actually an issue that he had. And he called the explosive bomb a bomberoni. And he delighted viewers with the way that he approached criminals. He'd often t mock them as well. Serious criminals like murderers, killers, kidnappers, hitmen. He'd make fun of them to the public. And of course, this would definitely offend somebody. You can't just go around talking badly about people and expect somebody to not take that to heart. Again, another word of advice, as I say. Try to not upset people. Try to not judge somebody for a mistake they've made in their life and try to be as fair as possible in your reporting. In a weird interlink as well, between the current story with the French journalist De Vries and Martin Koch, they both had dealings with William Hollander, who was the notorious Danish criminal. Hollander was in prison in 1983 for kidnapping the beer magnet Freddie Heineken, the same Freddie that the other journalist wrote a book about. So you see, even all these years after Martin Koch is dead, there were still people trying to achieve what he couldn't. Koch and Hollander were in prison together and Koch often spoke to him and also Carl van der Hort, who was also another person that De Vries wrote about. During his time in prison, Koch actually published a picture of himself with other prisoners next to a makeshift bar. And this actually got released to the press and it resulted in Koch actually getting beaten up for bringing the attention onto the prisoners. 
But he went on to say in the interview that he didn't regret doing it. He said it brought him loads of fame and interviews and he thrived off this attention. Amsterdam has long been renowned for its journalism and also crime blogs as well. Information is a commodity that is in high demand due to the massive increase in drug importation and exportation. There is always something to be discussed. But of course, that sometimes means that people will compete for the headlines and compete for the controversy. And this is something that you have to be very careful not to do. Don't try to hype a story up beyond what it is in order to try to get people to click onto your story. Because in some ways, this could maybe put yourself in danger. A lot of these crime bloggers in the Netherlands have to walk around with security due to the stories that they delve into and the things they speak about that are not in the public domain. Coke was shot dead in 2016 and he left the strip club at around 11.20. Surveillance footage shows the moment that lights on a Volkswagen Polo lit up the car park as Coke walked out the door and gets into his car. He aims the gun into the driver's side window and opens fire, killing Coke at the scene. This is nothing new in the Netherlands. There will always be a place for people that want fame alongside telling the facts. As I said before, there is a big difference in the journalism that you can do and the journalism that offends people and also can get you into trouble. If you want to be an investigative journalist, then let's try and find out the corruption in the higher-ups, the ranks, the government, the schooling, the people that are looking after your children. Because I find so much time and effort is focused on exposing people from poor backgrounds and poverty bashing that we actually lose that miss out on the bigger picture that none of this could happen if the bigger system didn't exist so rest in peace to martin coke and i hope that this journalist in the netherlands makes a full recovery but i'd also say to be very careful and very respectful and very understanding about who you're covering and what you're trying to get across in your story are you trying to mock somebody or are you trying to find the lessons that can be learned from a story so really appreciate you joining me today. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. I'll be back again very shortly with some more news. Peace.